Hi, I'm James Patrick, the director of Big Picture. In this interview, I caught up with Ivor Cummins in Portugal. He's a former biomedical engineer by trade, and in 2012, he delved into the cause of all chronic disease. And then when this whole COVID episode unfolded, he was in a unique position to analyze and write on and discuss what was truly taking place. I first noticed him with his video on case demics, enlightening analysis of the epidemic of cases we saw driven by PCR tests. Let's hear what he has to say about the big picture. I'm a biochemical engineer, graduated in 1990, quickly went into medical device manufacture, corporate mass production, mass manufacturing, and I became an expert problem solver leading teams of engineers in complex problem solving, all branches of science. What that means is uh, engineering is known as the problem solving profession, so engineers are relatively uh, skilled in problem solving, you know, putting together complex multi-factor kind of maps uh, of very difficult issues that you need to understand root cause. Uh, but I was top of the heap even within engineering. So I became a specialist at a high level in very complex problem solving. So I had a 25 year corporate career, uh, managing teams, managing people and leading in problem solving. And then in 2012, I had some blood tests. Several were kind of out of range. They were standard tests. And I went to three doctors in succession in frustration, including a professor of medicine to get the answers. What were the implications and what were the root causes I could fix? I got no joy and I realized there was a hole in the heart of medicine. How could they not understand their own measurements? So I went ResearchGate, PubMed, I had corporate logons, and I discovered in a few weeks that everything we were told about cholesterol and fat and nutrition was mostly BS. And I found the solution, which was to eat real food, high fat foods. And in eight weeks, I lost 30 pounds and all my bloods became exquisite. And that's when I started into metabolic health, doing YouTube videos and explaining this. A huge kind of network of doctors, professors and metabolic science around the world built up around me. And then it became commercial in 2015. One of Ireland's wealthiest entrepreneurs who wanted to save the world from heart disease, David Bobbitt, found me and he began to fund me to travel all over the world and lecture people in these matters. In March 2020, my wife was going to buy masks. She's a first class honors engineer and she knows my health stuff. And I asked her why? And she said, well, because this COVID thing. But I had seen the Diamond Princess cruise ship data and I said to her, this will not touch any of us in our family with five children. And also it won't even touch my 80 year old mother. And the reason I knew that is because I knew her blood test results. She always got me to look at them and she had incredibly low insulin resistance. Her liver enzymes were beautiful. And I knew she would not even have the risk that aged people have. And I was right to this day, two and a half years later, we all got COVID, nothing happened. What we experienced was like a mega version of swine flu 2009. So Der Spiegel magazine in Germany before it was co-opted did an article showing how that was a collusion between pharma, WHO and other corporate interests. And we all were there for swine flu. It had very little impact and yet the whole world went half mad. I think 10 years later with the purchase of media and vastly more influence, similar actors were able to pull off SARS-CoV-2 uh, as the bubonic plague when really it was just a severe flu equivalent. I think there's a collusion of interests, many interests. So the primary one would be generally pharmaceutical industry co-opting the WHO and the foundations who are vaccine and profit centric like Bill and Melinda, Gavi, Seppi and all these people. It's pandemic uh, industry and it's growing enormously in power as we saw. But I think there's a bigger picture too that the vaccine passports are a route to getting uh, ID cards for everyone and QR codes and tracking that will enable central bank digital currency, which is an imperative, I think, uh, to come in. And it will require us to have this control surveillance and tracking and the vaccine passports are a way to bring that in. So, so many interests are served, governmental, political, corporate, pharmaceutical, and countless quangos and bodies like the UN, etc. 
a quango is kind of a non-governmental organization where everyone is feeding from the trough they're getting funding from government funding from other agencies and they're working on an initiative but they're really feeding and it's profit oriented ultimately so i think we are beset with quangos and the phrase we're all in it together that was meant to make us lock down yeah i think truly they are all in it together in a very real way i guess the who really is a subsidiary of the un so if you try and push back against who kind of mandates and who pandemic you know treaties even if you were successful you'd then be looking right down the barrel of the un so i, I think it's challenging years ahead it's just a mass of interconnections at all levels it's a classic capitalist, you know, organism moving towards profit, control and more profit. It, it's just business. And people think, oh, conspiracy theory. It's not a conspiracy theory. It's just business and bureaucracy built and profiteering and regulatory capture. It's just that in 2020, we got to a level that was beyond anything in human history. It's a massively asymmetrical business. Um, yes, there are small numbers of ultra wealthy individuals and, and corporations taking all the money from the small medium enterprises and ordinary people. And we've seen that, it was published even in Politico and in Forbes, this massive wealth transfer. So that all works right for the big guys. Um, and then there's individuals who are extremely influential who are maybe not as visible and here there's a sense of conspiracy theory but there's some great documentaries historical showing how the rockefeller family and many other similar families put together the club of rome trilateral commission and all of these organizations with a long-term view to managing the world better but what that really meant was not managing it better for the little guy the conspiracy is there but if you point anyone towards it even if it's an historical documentary as soon as they smell something about powerful people organizations and families being involved in orchestrating events the modern person has been trained over decades to see that as a conspiracy theory and they will shut down so they're almost like laboratory like Pavlov's dogs, you know, the conspiracy theory bell jingles and they salivate and they run out of the room. It's, it's very sad. How they've done it is perfect. So you make sure you publish everything, but with the reason that we want a more stable, better world for everyone. So you can publish everything. You can dog whistle to all of your partners. You can flesh out all your ideas like project manage openly. But because you kind of have huge influence on in the media, the media will never focus in there and question you, like investigative reporting, that's gone. Remember like Watergate, that's gone. So nowadays, no one will dig into anything of the nature we're discussing. They instinctively know, their top editors know, the CEOs of the media organizations know, we don't go there because that smells like conspiracy theory and we know we know not to go there. It's understood, it's not briefcases of money given to people to make them be unethical. It's just understood. That's why we saw none of the media would go there for any of the absurdities of COVID. They just wouldn't go there. A totalitarian system is not like a dictatorship. And I love this uh, description. A dictatorship has one or two or some key nasty individuals. And when they take over and they have power through fear over the population, theoretically you could topple them and get back your country. But usually when they do get full power, they actually back off on their badness and they, uh, they kind of want to be a benign dictator. Communism is very different because there's whole layers of bureaucrats who are enforcing an ideology. And if you get a couple of those guys and pull them out, I mean, the water just fills back in behind them. So Stalin, his point was, could execute half of his top leaders and he had no worries. He just, they just filled back in again. Mm -hmm. So I think, yeah, you, you catch Pfizer out. The media won't really cover it much. You know, it's like pulling a rock out of the river and the sand will swirl, there'll be a brief fuss and then everything will go back to normal. The river keeps flowing. That's our challenge.
you're dealing with a multi-dimensional cartel the likes of which has never existed in human history. I mean, this is where we are today. It's the evolution of capitalism uh, to an extreme form. Uh, and it is tough. I still think that grassroots are the only way because if you try and use the institutions or the law, we saw clearly in Ireland and elsewhere that the judges would just not engage with challenges to the lockdown and masks. Right. They would just kind of block it. In Portugal, where we are today at this conference, a judge actually overturned the uh, detention of two Australians based on PCR tests and said quite correctly that it was inappropriate. That judge was approached by the police within days and his phone was taken and he knew and all other judges knew n not to go there again. Uh, and that is a challenge. So I think grassroots education of the people, I'm not saying that's going to work necessarily. I think it's one of the primary uh, avenues we have. When you educate people, when they share the word, when they begin to become aware of the manipulation and mass formation that's been inflicted upon us, uh, over time they will become a resistance which may have a very powerful effect. Uh, but to go through the official channels on this problem, I kind of think the bad guys have the official channels kind of sewn up to an, ex to an extent. I don't mean to be too defeatist. <laughs> <laughs> so I think yeah, the Sweden situation, which was enormously important for the world to prove with a beautiful uh, case control history that lockdowns did effectively nothing. I think the reason it happened was the government in Sweden, like all governments, were given the feed down from the top to lockdown. But the Swedish had a very solid constitution that effectively made that not possible. Also, Anders Tegnell, uh, the Swedish epidemiologist, and not just him, but his whole team, were independently of the mind that locking down was crazy. It made no sense according to any science. And they held to that position and the government reluctantly allowed them to. So what we saw was they were abused by all of the world's media relentlessly. Uh, so the world or the powers that be wanted Sweden to lock down. But what I described there was the reason they held on. Huge leadership and bravery uh, for them to do that. Yeah. For Tegnell. I mean, that's a hero. That is a hero. Yes, Sweden is holding against the nonsensical, unscientific lockdowns because of the mechanisms I described, the constitution, Tegnell, uh, and all of that. But a lot of people in Sweden said, when the vaccine comes, Sweden will all take it because they trust the government. And now they even more will trust them because the government never forced them into nonsense lockdowns. And that's what happened. Gusecki and Anders Tegnell were heroes in terms of preventing nonsensical, unscientific lockdowns. However, they were also realists and they knew there would be no stopping the vaccine rollout dynamics because that's not like lockdown that has no science behind it. Vaccines are safe and effective. So they knew they couldn't push against that. They knew well in advance. Yeah, that would have been the end of the career, huh? The end of career immediately. Yeah, so now I'm going to, because I have a large following that was uh, hugely grateful that I saved their sanity. That was the most common thing. I was inundated with messages, people saying, oh, you saved my sanity, thank you. Because they didn't have the scientific and technical knowledge to know that they were right, but I was able to help them realize they were correct. Uh, so I will continue to cover the topic and I'll watch the development of this uh, kind of issue. But I will be moving more back to metabolic health, heart disease, type 2 diabetes, prevention, and, you know, all of that realm. There's so much I have yet to do there. I, I have been kind of swatting up, as we say in Ireland, or researching the monetary system, and it is fascinating. So the fact that money is created, even by local banks, out of thin air, uh, the debt mountain that can never be resolved, and the absurdity of our fiat money system. And it will need a reset. Klaus Schwab is correct there. It will need a reset. And I think the mechanism will be a central bank digital currency with much more surveillance and control uh, included in the new system. And that will get them to bring the new reset. World War II was a major reset, but I, I think the next one coming will be enabled by 
pandemics, uh, wars like Ukraine, distractions like monkeypox, and just get the CBDC in there. And yeah, that's what the aim is, I would guess. Then we're fucked, huh? Not entirely <laughs> fucked. Uh, I think the grassroots will still provide a very, very effective resistance in the coming years. The problem with the CBDC is currently we deal with the banks and that's bad enough and the creation of money out of nothing. With the central bank digital currency, there will be a central control, like an AI organism almost, that all of us will be tracked, all our purchases will be tracked and the Bank of International Settlements lead has said this that they will be able to decide you ate too much meat this week your card won't work you travel too far climate your diesel purchase will not work and when that happens if that happens we are in serious trouble because if you even begin to show dissent or you begin to show leadership and question anything you could find your card not working and if people think that's a fantasy, look at the last two and a half years with COVID. It is no longer a 1984 scenario that's imaginary. We have seen it happen all over the world. So imagine they have the power of everything you purchase is in their control, every individual. Now we're in serious trouble, so let's just try and not let that happen. Well, I've been shadow banned left, right and center, but Ivor Cummins in Google still works. You'll get my YouTube, my Twitter handle, and my Facebook, etc. So yeah, the name Ivor Cummins. YouTube is my primary kind of platform, but I'm an Odyssey and Rumble too.